Hi, I'm Beverly Logg, and I'm a sophomore this year at UNLV. Uh, I'm Steve Hirsch. I'm a director of new program uh, development at a uh, small geothermal company here in Reno, Geothermal Development Associates. Hi, welcome, Steve. Uh, you're involved with some interesting projects in the East African Rift region. Can you share with us what's going on in Africa? Um, yes, uh, there are uh, a number of uh, countries. Uh, the, the geothermal potential in East Africa is confined to the East African Rift Valley region, which runs from uh, uh, Ethiopia, Djibouti, uh, Kenya in the north, and down through uh, Uganda, and Tanzania, into Malawi in the, in the south. And uh, there's been an increasing level of interest in geothermal uh, in the Rift Valley region uh, for uh, uh, a number of reasons. But uh, Kenya has been the most aggressive country in the region in terms of developing its geothermal resources. Uh, and behind that is, uh, behind Kenya has been Ethiopia, and there are a number of other of the countries that I mentioned that are investigating geothermal development as we speak. Okay. And how far along is development in Kenya, for example? Uh, they began their geothermal development uh, in 1981 with the installation of their first 15 megawatt geothermal plant. And today I believe they have about 167 megawatts of installed capacity, and they're moving along uh, at a very, very rapid rate to expand that uh, by quite a bit more. Okay. And so can you just explain to people who don't understand what does 167 megawatts of capacity uh, translate to in real world use? <sighs> well, I think it's about uh, 9 or 10 percent of the Kenyan generating capacity. Um, but in terms of the number of East African households, I, I can't calculate that because the power demands are significantly different than the US, US households. Um, but it, uh, the Kenyans are focusing on geothermal because their previous priority energy source uh, was uh, hydropower and they have really run out of the commercially viable hydro resources so geothermal is now the uh, technology of choice in Kenya and in other countries in, in East Africa as well although they're not moving as rapidly as as Kenya and what are some of the challenges that, that you face in Kenya and in Africa in general? Well, to answer that question, you know, I'd have to really describe who we are, you know, what our, our company is. And we are a 33-year-old uh, uh, U.S.-based, Nevada-based, Reno-based uh, geothermal power generation company. And we supply uh, geothermal uh, geotechnical advisory services as well as design, engineer, and manufacture and assemble uh, relatively small scale geothermal power plants in the 2 to 20 megawatt range, uh, generally for export. So the challenge, the challenges that we face uh, uh, in, in East Africa are are multiple, um, and uh, they can. They, they I can begin with uh, learning about the resource that exists and what the interests are of the local decision makers in terms of the roles that they want their public sector to play in relation to uh, geothermal development, and then correspondingly the roles that they would like the private sector to play. Mm -hmm. And these are moving targets. Um, Kenya, for example, started out initially with a pure public sector driven uh, geothermal program. 
and gradually they've been shifting to uh, uh, both public and private sector owned and operated geothermal power plants and uh, increasingly going toward private private ownership and operation as well. Um, in other East African countries coming from predominantly uh, public sector guided uh, uh, frameworks, they too have been starting along on, uh, on, on the, the government owned power company uh, or uh, the government distribution, transmission and distribution company. Uh, uh, owning and operating the geothermal plant, but they've been moving increasingly toward private sector participation. And uh, but the pace has been has been much 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 slower, and that's one of the obstacles. You know, the pace, the the upfront risk for geothermal exploration has been uh, uh, a significant obstacle uh, in East Africa as it is here in the U.S. Um, and uh, countries are addressing this, uh, you know, in, in, in different ways. But that's that's an obstacle. The financing is a second obstacle, uh, predominant mainly for the exploration drilling. But even when the rec when the resource is uh, uh, proven and tested, there are still perceptions among financiers of country-related risk. Currency risk, um, uh, you know, the commercial viability of the off-taker risk. So th there, are, there are, uh, it's 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 not a business either in the U.S. or in East Africa for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, getting started uh, has higher costs because of the distances, <coughs> need for. You need to really like, to develop a deep insight into the local context, the local uh, uh, cultural context, the, the, uh, the energy context, uh, environmental context. You, you really, uh, it's, it really requires an in-depth knowledge of, of all of those factors to sense what can be done and what can't be done and who who are the allies? And who are the uh, who are the potential support uh, agencies that you know a private, a small private, or any U.S. company can count on as it you know seeks to be either an equipment supplier or a uh, a developer in in in, uh, in in East Africa or an overseas country. So our, our company uh, has been mainly an equipment supplier of small, uh, small geothermal power plants. We've supplied two power plants to Kenya in the last uh, five, five years. Uh, the first one was two megawatts. The second one that we've just recently supplied is two and a half megawatts. And so we're looking at supplying more equipment, but at the same time, becoming uh, a developer where we would own and operate a power plant or, or more, and where we would actually sell the power to the local power company over a uh, 20 to 25 year period. So both those options are uh, business plans, business plan options for us, and we're kind of going both down both those roads simultaneously. Well, thank you, Steve. Again, this was Steve Hirsch, Vice President of Project Development for GDA. Thank you. Thanks a lot.